In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform association rules using Analytics Solver. We're using this data file that contains grocery store transactions. You can see that we have 14 items in here and 10 transactions. In each transaction, the customer may or may not purchase an item. If the customer purchases an item, the value will be one, otherwise it will be zero. So the grocery store would like to gain insights into its customer's purchase patterns to possibly improve in-aisle product placement and cross-product promotions. Under the data mining tab, select association. We can see that the data worksheet displays and the first row contains headers is selected. Also make sure that the data in binary matrix format is selected as we have ones and zeros in our values. So for an association rule to be useful, it must be well supported, which means support count should be greater or equal to 20% of the total transactions. In this case, we have a total of 10 transactions, so we should at least have two support. Also, the leaf ratio is preferred to be greater than one and confidence is greater than 50, which means it's not by random choice. And we want to find rules that can explain an important previously unknown relationship or new insights and actionable. So here we want to change the minimum support to four. This means we're only interested in the rules that has at least four transactions supporting it. We'll leave the minimum confidence to be 50%. And then we click OK. This will result in two worksheets. The more important one is the AR output. AR stands for association rules. First, it shows the summary of our association rules settings. It has 10 transactions, 14 items, output 52 rules. Before you look into the rules, we need to sort the results. Before we sort the results, let's talk about confidence and the ratio. So confidence is the support of antecedent and consequent divided by the support of antecedent. Leaf ratio is confidence divided by support of consequence out of total number of transactions. So you can see that to evaluate the efficiency of a rule, we compute a leaf ratio of the rule by accounting for the frequency of the consequent. So usually we want to sort the results by leaf ratios first and then confidence and larger value is better. And the preferred setting is 80% minimum confidence, leaf ratio greater than one and support greater than 20% of the total transactions. So let's sort the leaf ratio and then confidence. Add another one for the confidence, also largest to smallest. Now we can see that the top three rules has 100% confidence, meaning if the antecedent happens, the consequent must happen. Antecedent is the if part of the rule and consequent is the then part of the rule. We can see that the top three rules has 100% confidence and two leaf ratio. This means that if the antecedent happens, then consequence, then consequence must happen. In other words, if a customer purchased bread, he must purchase jelly also. Similarly, if a customer purchased bread, he must purchase fruit and jelly also. Similarly, if a customer purchased bread and fruit, he must also purchase jelly. Let's take a look at the raw data to see if this is true. We can see that there are four transactions where a customer purchased bread. In these four transactions, customer also purchased jelly. Now, is it true that vice versa? We notice that there is one transaction where customers purchase jelly, however, did not purchase bread. Therefore, we see in the fourth rule, it has only 80% confidence. If the customer purchases jelly, then the customer most likely will purchase bread also. 
We can also verify this by looking into the correlation between bread and jelly. We can see that the correlation is fairly high, 0.81. If it's perfect, correlate to each other, then it will be 1 or 100%. Association rules is also called market basket analysis or affinity analysis. They are also applicable to disciplines other than marketing. For example, association rules can help medical researchers to understand which treatment have been commonly prescribed to certain patient symptoms and possibly the resulting effects. 